Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This is Code Town Round 8 of Code Forces. We're gonna solve the third problem that is Bessie's birthday cake, and we're gonna solve the easier version of this problem. So we'll straight away jump to the problem. We have the person as Bessie and has received a birthday cake from her friend Elsie. So and it came in the form of a regular polygon with n sides. Birthday cake will generally be in a circular one, but it's like a regular polygon. So regular polygon means all sides will be equal, right? So if it is like five sides, it's a pentagon. Uh, four sides, it's a square, and so on. The vertices of the cake are numbered from one to n clockwise. So these are the vertices. It will be one, two, three, four, five, and so on. You and Bessie are going to choose some of those vertices to cut non-interesting non-intersecting diagonals into the cake. In other words, the endpoints of the diagonals must be part of the chosen vertices. Suppose Bessie chooses uh, 5 and 3, you can cut this cake like this. And suppose 2 and 4, 2 and 4 should not be cut because they told it's non-intersecting. So you cannot cut it right like that. Or else what you can do. So instead of this, if 2 and 4 is selected, you can cut like this and cut like this. Okay. So 1, 2, 3 triangles are there. So Bessie would like to know, give out the pieces, result in a triangle to keep consistency. So whenever Bessie wants to cut it, she have to maintain consistency. That's why she makes sure every uh, piece in the cake should be a triangle and the size does not matter here. And the whole cake does not have to be separated as triangles. So if it is like some part is square or hexagon does not matter. Other shapes are allowed in the cake, but those will not be counted. Blessy has already chosen X of those vertices that can be used to, to form diagonals. She wants you to choose no more than Y other vertices. In the easy problem, they told that Y is zero. So in this case, I am not choosing any vertices. I am choosing zero vertices. Only Blessy is giving me X vertices for me to cut. What is the maximum number of triangle pieces uh, of cake Blessy can give out? So that is the question. So in this case, uh, let's consider a simple example. Before that, let's see the constraints. N means inside a uh, regular polygon and X can be in the range of two. Blessy will at least give you two points, two vertices, and uh, it will be in the range for two less than or equal to X, less than or equal to minimum of N into two power two into 10 power five and Y equal to zero because I am not choosing any vertices, only Blessy is giving. So this is N. X and Y, these are all the X vertices. So as you see, eight is an octagon. Uh, Blessy have chosen one, two, six, five. So optimally cutting to get the maximum triangles is one and five it connected and two and five and one and six. So that two triangles came. Similarly, in test case two, they chose all the vertices and it tried to cut uh, their drawn lines such that no two lines intersect each other. And even if you're not using a vertex also, no problem. If you use this vertex, it might happen that it might intersect. So the maximum uh, triangles that are possible here is six triangles. And for the same, this also like uh, three triangles. Okay, sorry, two triangles for four sides. Now let's try to uh, take the minimum value and try to figure out the solution. So suppose you have this four, right? Four sided uh, thing. And let's go for a case where n is equal to equal to x. The num total number of vertices is the total number of vertices that the Blessy is giving. Cake have four vertices means Blessy is also giving, hey, you know, use all the vertices. Now I'm telling that if this is the thing, one, two, three, four, Blessy is telling that, you know, choose first, second, third, and fourth. No problem, whatever be it, you choose it. So what is the way I can cut? I can cut like this to get two vertices or I can cut like this to get two vertices again. So for four, uh, we got by selecting all we, uh, so for four, by selecting all the vertices, we got the value as two. Now let's try for five. So for five, what happens? You just have to, I'm just randomly doing it. You are selecting all the vertices here. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what is the optimal way I can choose? Can I choose like this, something like this, this, this? Not possible, it is intersecting. So I can do something like this. Now, this became like a square, I can cut it, right? I can cut it. Now, as you see, all are part of this, one, two, three. So for five, uh, when I choose all the vertices, it will be three. Let's go for one more, that is hexagon. One, two, three, four, uh, let me try like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, uh, what can I do? I can, if I choose all the vertices, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, what is the best thing I can do? I can cut like this, I can cut like this, then this is a square, I can cut like this. Now, how much things came? One, two, three, four. 
This is the best possible way, right? All are actually triangles. So for six, all, and it became like four, four triangles. If you observe one thing, I tried to optimize it as maximum as possible for n equal to equal to x. I say that, you know, for this, I have to one, two, three. There is a relation. Is there any relation that is happening? If I observe properly, I get that for uh, x vertices, if I select, I get the value of x minus two. So this is x minus two, right? Four vertices are collected. Four minus two is two. Five minus two is three. And six minus two is four. What is the proof? For that, in geometry, like uh, getting proof or in getting something from intuition is like quite hard. So uh, you may think that how can I get it? So tomorrow, if some other problem comes, we will learn that, okay, x minus 2 is already existing for all the vertices. If I choose all the vertices and if I want to triangulate it, uh, how many triangles can come? It is x minus 2. So we got this by the sense of observation, by just getting like a hunch. So if you want, if you are really interested, go to the editorial section here and just watch the video. It's a YouTube video. It explains why it is valid. What does this mean is it's not like any equal to equal to X. It is telling that, you know, if you choose X vertices, you can have uh, these many number of triangles. X minus two triangles can come. Now, let us uh, make it more interesting here. If I choose this, this is not playing any role here, right? Even if this triangle, if vertex is here or not here, doesn't make any sense. I don't have to consider this at all. So even if I remove a vertex here, still the triangle is same. So it doesn't mean that uh, either the vertex is existing or the vertex is not existing. The answer will be the same only. But what are those vertices where the answer is not existing? The only thing I am concerned is, suppose if two vertices are here, this and this only exist, it doesn't make any sense, right? One vertex should be here and the other should be opposite. Opposite means it should not be in the same line as mine. It should not be adjacent, but anything that is skipping one time can be a triangle. So, for example, uh, let's take the same example here. Like you are having a pentagon here and you are choosing this vertex, okay? If I choose this vertex, can I make a triangle? No. If I choose this vertex, I can make a triangle, right? The outside one can be a triangle. But if I choose this thing and removing this one, can I make uh, a triangle? No, not possible. For now, it's not possible for one. Now, the only possible way is it should be here. What does it mean is, you know, I uh, you there is a point here that is not lying in the same adjacent line as mine but the next guy is a chosen vertex then on the edge I can form a triangle right so this is one observation so what is it so I tell that if uh, let's say that if a is part of x and suppose this is like c or something c is not part of uh, x but uh, b is part of x then count it as a triangle right S same thing for so on everything so suppose if i have octagon if i have something like this 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 and this and this even though if it exists or does not exist doesn't matter we will come to that later but for now let's assume that if this is the case i will create one like this one like this and one like this and one like this okay in this case this is a triangle this is a triangle this is a triangle this is a triangle now what did we form here this is a four-sided polygon if four-sided polygon i already solved that it the answer is two how did we get because the x value is two so how did we get we chose already four we chose already four here so four vertices it gave me so out of four four minus two is how much two so I know that this is as per x minus 2, I get two triangles here. Now, are there any more triangles? For that, I iterate through all the edges here. So if this is the one, this is not part of it. But if this is part of it, uh, yes, this forms one triangle. Then if this is part of it, this is not part of this one, again one. So 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, now let us uh, try to create like something 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, uh, okay, this is not changing. So something like, let's say, copy, paste. Yeah. 
So I am trying to select all the points in the octagon. If I select all the points like this, 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 what is optimal? I do. I do like this, 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 this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. What is this theorem? Like eight di uh, dots are here. Eight x minus two I use. So there are six things. So six already came. And is the are there any edges? Now you see. I got that the answer is six now. How do I know whether the edges are getting formed or not? Here, this is here, but this should not be part of it. Since this is already part of it, I can tell that uh, no, there are no triangles that is formed, right? Only if there is a gap here, I can tell there is an extra triangle. So suppose I can tell that, you know, I can keep something like this. In this case, I tell that one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so six triangles are here. So now uh, how many vertices comes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If seven vertices are here, I tell that as per this rule, seven minus two is how much? Five. So five triangles are formed. Then I go to my uh, other logic. What is my other logic? Take this vertex. Is the next one part? It is not a part. Now, is the next one next one part? Yes. Now I can form a diagonal here. Then you call one. So five plus one is six. Now both are six only, right? So that is the logic here. Now let us try to uh, see how we coded it. So we made it as a eight, uh, like if it is like a pentagon, I made it like a zero based indexing for easier computation because this is like a rotation, right? Two, three, four, five. After five, it should go to one. This is not possible. So what do we do? We instead of this, we go it as a zero based indexing. So four plus one, five mod five will again go to the next adjacent element. That's why we are taking it. Vertices dot insert is like a set. Now i equal to zero, i less than x, i plus plus. I have to check whether the next and the after next value. That means as per the octagon example here, you know, if this is the value I take as v of i, what is the next? This is the next value and this is the after next value. I have to check that. Uh, I wrote this somewhere, right? Uh, so here is what C is next here and B is after next. So next should not be part of this A. I am taking it as a vector, uh, the item that is already there in X. Now C is not part of the item, but B is part of the item. If C is part of the item, it will automatically be taken care by the theorem X minus two. If it is not there, then B is part, I will create a diagonal there, right? That's how you, you will add one to the answer it is present. So if you take two numbers and you check uh, the next is not there, this is not there, then it, if this is there, uh, after next is there, then you increment the answer. So that's about the question. So this is the solution that is written. So if you have any doubts, please let me know in the comments and also uh, uh, please uh, for geometry, like if this is something new, next time if you see a similar problem, we would be able to see it. So that's all guys. And also don't forget to subscribe if you like the video. Thank you so much. Bye.